wherever you find yourself this Christmas, I hope it is surrounded by loved ones. One of the greatest tragedies of the pandemic, one that still lives on for some, was the separation of families. The family in its ideal form is a place where you always belong, where you are forever loved. No matter where you go in life, what you believe, what choices you make, your brother will always be your brother, your sister will always be your sister, and your mom and dad will always be your mom and dad. But sadly, this ideal is not experienced by everyone. During the pandemic, even deeper than the physical separation was the wounds caused by ideological separation, by the othering of family over the vaccine and other decisions that they made. There are many places to point blame, but ultimately each of us is responsible for our own decisions and how we treat one another. From the family to the community, to the country, we were divided. Why myself and so many of the people I met in Ottawa went there to stand in the freezing cold for weeks on end was to seek to heal this division, to heal this family. In Ottawa, I saw every type of person. I saw flags of all of our provinces and territories. I saw the Every Child Matters flag. I saw the rainbow flag. But more than anything, I saw the Canadian flag, a flag which waves for all of us. It's not a conservative flag, it's not a liberal flag, it's not a vaccinated flag, it's not an unvaccinated flag, it's not a straight flag, it's not a gay flag, it's not a religious flag, it's not an atheist flag, it's the Canadian flag. Like in any family, we are all unique. Our family, like our nation, influences who we are, but it does not define who we are. No matter who we are, family is still family. A Canadian is still a Canadian. For those who have followed my channel, you know I haven't posted much in the last few months. I went to Ottawa to end the mandates. I did not want to be a protester. I did not want to be a journalist. I don't even like social media. I wanted the regular Canadians who were attacked and othered by their family to feel at home again in this great nation. My father once gave me a wise piece of advice. Don't attack. Don't defend. Do what you were called to do. After the last of the mandates fell, the shed went back to being a shed, the truck went back to work, and I too returned to my full-time job. I knew my calling was complete, and I stepped back. I had hoped to see a stronger nation, but instead of unity, I saw further division. What began as a goal of unity and freedom uh, developed into many different goals, and the labeling of who the real freedom fighters were. What began in Ottawa as a truly Canadian show of love, unity, and freedom that was open to all devolved into infighting, accusations, and name-calling from all sides. We saw during the pandemic, and especially in Ottawa, what happens when politicians, media, and anyone else manipulate the truth, outright lie, falsely accuse, and resort to name-calling and ultimately othering those they disagree with or that they don't understand. This is not how a family is supposed to function. And it's not how a nation is supposed to function. In this family of Canada, we have long held values of personal freedom, democracy, and the rule of law. Within that, we are all unique and have vastly different views about all manner of things. But we are family, and we can disagree, and yes, even argue, while still being Canadian and still being family. We do this by getting involved politically, by running for office, by voting, and yes, sometimes we do this through peaceful protest, but not through hatred, personal attacks, and name-calling. Such behavior destroys any family. My favorite part of this journey has been sharing the stories of the very regular people who gave themselves to serve their Canadian family. And as this journey winds down for me, I want to share one more story of a very regular person who gave it all for their family. Whatever your beliefs, the story of Christmas serves as an unchanging reminder of true love, of peace, of family. The story of a baby, the human representation of the God of the universe, who came not as a king or warrior, but as a helpless baby born into a poor family. This baby lived his life doing nothing wrong and yet was hated by the authorities, falsely accused and ultimately tortured and killed. He was beaten for our transgressions and by his wounds we are healed. He died to take the ultimate punishment for any wrong we have done and his invitation to join his family is open to all. Unlike Jesus, we are all flawed, but together, in community, in family, 
we seek to follow his example, to stand for what we believe, but to stand in peace and in love, turning the other cheek. Regardless of your views of the truth of this story, I hope that this Christmas, the story of the birth and death of Jesus can serve as a reminder of true love, of peace, and of family. Like a united family, a united Canada begins with each of its members making the choice to love our neighbor as we love ourselves. Not agree with our neighbor, not vote like our neighbor, not live like our neighbor, not even support everything that our neighbor does, but to love them as fellow Canadians. This Christmas and New Year, my wish is that each of us, whatever views we hold, would reach out to one person that we have hurt, one person we have hated, one person we have othered, and remember, we are all Canadian. We are all the true North strong and free. We are family. Merry Christmas, everyone.